guidance session. During this, during this session, her heart rate HX is measured in beats per minute, where X is the time in minutes from the start of the session. So that means it starts off at X equals zero. For the first eight minutes of the session, Hannah does a number of exercises. As she does these exercises, her heart rate changes. In this time, H of X is given by this here. Work out Hannah's heart rate four minutes after the start of the session. Well, just to put this in context, all right, all we've got to do is replace X with four because you enter in the number of minutes and it will tell you what the heart rate is. Okay, so this part here, so 28.5 multiplied by four squared plus 105 times four plus 70. So 105 times 4 and then plus 70. Check from the marking scheme 162 BPM is her heart rate after 4 minutes. Okay, now let's move on to the next part. Find H of X. So, what does H of X mean? It means differentiate once. So, I'm going to differentiate 2x cubed. 2x cubed. Add, add 1 onto the power, so it'll be 2x to the power of 4 and divide by 4. The next one will be 28.5x cubed, because I'm adding 1 onto the power and dividing by 3. And then, oh, whoa, 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 I'm integrating. I'm meant to be differentiating. Differentiate, that is, not integrate. Let's try this again. Bring 3 to the front, multiply by 2, and you get 6x. Take 1 away from the power, 6x squared. Multiply 2 by 28.5 and get 57, and take 1 away from the power. Drop the x to get 105, and get rid of 70, and you're done. That is h of x. Done. Find out what h dash 2 means. Well, the difference between h dash x and h dash 2 is the fact that x gets replaced with 2. So it's 6 times uh, 2 squared minus 57 times 2 plus 105. Okay, so it's going to be uh, 6 times 2 squared minus 57 times 2 plus 105, and we get 15 beats per minute. Oh, sorry, 15. Now, what does this question mean? What does this mean at this point in time? Remember, the first derivative is the rate, and it's the rate of beats per minute. So the rate of beats per minute, because the slope is going upwards at 15, it means that your heart rate is currently rising at 15 beats per minute. So that's how you explain it. Hannah's heart rate, heart rate is increasing at 15 beats per minute at the two minute mark. So her heartbeat is on the way up. Okay, it's increasing after two minutes. Now, let's have a look at the next one. The graph shows h of x from zero to eight. Now, that would be the original formula, okay, which I can get here. I'm just gonna enter this into my table function. So what's it, uh, mode, table function, two x cubed. Uh, minus 28.5x squared plus 105x and plus 70. And then start at zero, stop at eight, and step at one. And we can see that it's you start off at 70, then you're at 148.5. After two minutes, you're at 182. And remember we said that it's increasing at the, at the two minute mark? 
you can see that it goes up again to 182.5 i think it's gone up and come back down again if i'm being honest so let's look for the max there i'd sort of zone in on two and three and i go up in a step of point one and you can see that there is a maximum here at 2.5 seems to be near the max but that's neither here nor there so i'm just going to start at zero and back to eight again in a step of one okay so these numbers this graph here is sort of explained using these numbers here 0 70 okay and then we, we explained that that was at about the 2.5 mark when it's at its maximum and then its minimum seems to be somewhere in between somewhere between six and seven or or seven and eight it's hard to know so once again i can zoom in on six and eight and if i could do a step point one i could just look for the minimum see the way i'm looking for the minimum here and i think that's it there seven and 40 no, so seven would be the minimum and that'd be uh 95.4 Okay, so you can get a gist of your graph, okay? Now, find the least value and greatest value of h of x. Looking for your min and your max of your formula. Remember what we said the formula was earlier? 2x cubed minus 28x squared. Uh, what was it? And plus 105x and 70. Now, your slope or your rate of increase at your maximum min is zero. So your slope equals zero, which means we're gonna do the first derivative equals zero. And we know the first derivative, we did a solve already today, it's six x squared minus 56 x plus 105. And we know that this now equals zero. Now, I'm just going to use the minus b formula here. I've been using it a lot today. a equals 6, b equals minus 56, minus b equals plus 56, and c equals 105. And I'm going to throw all that into the uh, calculator. Okay, so it's going to be minus b, which is uh, 56 plus square root. Uh, minus 56 squared. Now, whatever I type in the calculator, you put into your page four, six times c, 105, all over 2a, so that's two times six. And long and behold, now seven wasn't actually the min, it was actually 6.7 or six points. What, what does it want to? Sorry, 6.7, 6.75, I, I suppose I'd put it as 7.35. Okay, so that's the x value that causes, the x value that causes the min, and then the x value that causes the max would be, come back to my calculator and do a minus this time. And it's around the 2.6, 2.5, 2.6 mark, like I thought it would be. So that's actually 2.6, and this is actually 6.7 is where that min occurs, okay? Now, it doesn't actually ask for the x values. It actually wants the maximum and the minimum values. So that means I have to sub them back into the original formula. So I'm actually going to have to sub these back into, into the original formula, okay? So... Hmm. Sorry, guys. I think I think I may have made a mistake here. Sorry. Ah, silly me. Did I take down the formula wrong? It's fifty-seven, not fifty-six, when you differentiate it. So. Frustrating. 
So, sorry, that was 28.5. That makes that 57. So that's why I was slightly off earlier, which is unfortunate. Let's go back here for a second. Change that to 57 instead of 56. We get two and a half, exactly what I said was it was earlier. We get plus one, which is seven. So that's seven and 2.5. So 2.5 and seven. Sorry about that, gents. Now, I have a bit of a cheat code for this now. So we're gonna put the 2.5 and the seven back into the original formula to find out what the find out what the original uh, what the max and the min are respectively okay and then the other one's going to be 2 times 7 cubed minus 28.5 times 7 squared plus 105 times 7 plus 70 okay now I'm just going to take the shortcut here and, and, and read out both answers so I think the maximum we want the maximum and the minimum. Yeah, not spell them. Okay, not sure. Let's just do it. So two times two point five to the power of three minus twenty-eight point five to the power of two point five squared plus one oh five times 2.5 plus 70 and the maximum heart rate is 185.625 max and then we look for the min now and anywhere I see a 2.5 I'm going to replace it with a 7 now, it's a long question but it's not necessarily a difficult question I'm sure you're all riveted at home anyway. Now, uh, there's your minimum heart rate of 94.5. Okay. And now we're on to the next question. Thank you. Thank you. How long after how long after the start of the Hannah's after start of session is Hannah's heart rate decreasing most quickly? Win the first eight minutes. Give your answer in minutes and seconds. When are you decreasing? most quickly now decreasing most quickly would mean the you're on your way down decreasing most quickly means your slope is at its steepest now when you go over a hill your slope starts off reasonably shallow and then it gets steeper and steeper and steeper until it's at its steepest okay but then what happens after that is it starts to get starts to get shallower again because of the uh it starts to go the other direction so it's actually the point of inflection or the poi is the moment where you're going you're at your steepest and the point of inflection is actually the second derivative equal to zero so what we're going to do is we're going to do the first derivative which uh, is uh, 6x squared minus 57x this time and plus 105. We're going to do the second derivative uh, because it's the point of inflection is what we're looking for. And when we do that, we get a 12x minus 57. We put that equal to zero. And then x 12x equals 57 and x equals 57 over 12. And 57 over 12 is uh, x equals 4.75 so you go into your calculator and do 57 divided by 12 which is four and three quarters of an hour press this button it's four hours and 45 minutes oh sorry sorry it's four minutes and 45 seconds because it's minutes and seconds not hours and minutes okay cool that's question E. Oh, and there's an F. 
for our troubles. Bruno, Karen and Marta start a training session at the same time as Hannah. Both their heart rates are measured in BPM. For the first eight minutes of, of the session, Bruno's heart rate, B of X, is always 15 beats per minute more than Hannah's heart rate. Use this to write down B of X in terms of H of X. Oof. Okay, we only get Hannah's original formula. See Hannah's original formula? Q, X cubed, minus 28.5 squared, plus 105, plus 70. Now, if I want to make the heart rate 15 more, I just need to add on a 15 at the end. Okay, so that's all good. If we did a first derivative, we're going to get, so this is now B of X, because it's 15 beats per minute more than, than Hannah's one. Now if I do B, if I differentiate this once, it actually turns out to be the same thing, because when you differentiate the 70 and the 15, it turns to zero. So actually uh, B of X actually equals H dash X. Both first derivatives are the same because the last number has no influence on the derivative. So that's that part done. Now, done. B of x equals h of x. Now, for the first eight minutes of the session, Karen's heart rate, k of x, is always 10% less than Hannah's heart rate. Use this information to write k dash x in terms of h dash x. All right. So, once again, h of x is 2x cubed minus 28.5x squared plus, uh, what's it? Where can we go? 105x plus 70. Now, what I want you to make, what I want to familiarize yourself with here is that Imagine differentiating 5x or even 5x cubed. When you differentiate 5x cubed, what happens is the tree goes to the front and you're left with 15x squared. Or another way of thinking of it is you, you have five times tree goes to the front, five times 3x squared. Now, if I said 90% of that, that'd be 0.9 in, in front. And that point 0.9 doesn't really affect the differentiated part. So my plan here to turn h of x into k of x will be the following. I just simply put a point 0.9 at the very front, like so. And then I'm going to differentiate it. Now when I differentiate it, the point 0.9 stays where it is, doesn't do anything. And then I differentiate the rest of it as shown. And as we can see, this is the same as h dash x. So k dash x is 90% or 0.9 of h dash x. And that there gets you full marks for part f. And of course, there's a part g. Because why not? Mary does exercise for a longer time than Hannah. She goes zero to 10 minutes while uh and marta's heart rate is mx and see the way it's a uh, oh marta's heart rate mx is the same as hannah's but instead of x it's replaced with 0.8x so here's what we're going to do we're going to take out h of x here see ever see h of x okay and what we're going to do is the following where anywhere we see x squared or x, anywhere we see x, we're going to replace it with 0.8x. So anywhere you see x, replace it with 0.8x. Okay. So here's what we're going to get h of 0.8x, 2 times 
x to be cubed minus 28.5 times 0.8 x to be squared plus 105 times 0.8 x plus 70. Now here's the plan. We're only going to use the highlighted parts because we know it's an x cubed answer. So I'm going to do two times 0.8 to the power of 3. And we get 128 or 125 or 1.024. So I get 1.024x cubed. The next part, we're going to highlight this part here, the 0.8 and the squared. So we're going to get minus, minus 28.5 times 0.8 squared minus 18.24 okay then we're going to get 105 times 0.8 and what we get here is 84 and there long behold this is nx because nx is the same as uh, h of 0.8 so we have our a our b our c and our d sorted and we've written it in the form all right and that's the end of that question that took 20 minutes it was a very difficult question question seven on 20